ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال سبحانه وتعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين امين اما بعد we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praising him by glorifying him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower this gathering with his mercy and make it a source of forgiveness for us in dunya and akhirah and benefit us by it and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all of our needs and fulfill all of our obligations for us Ameen. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His deen is a very beautiful deen. And He has created all of us, all of mankind, all of history, all of humanity. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala is alone in charge, in directing the course of things. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created all of this creation, you know, he wanted to place on the earth a Khalifa. And, and the term Khalifa is a very, very heavy word. What does Khalifa mean? They said Khalifa means somebody who succeeds another person. Or Khalifa is somebody who represents, is a vicegerent, an ambassador to another. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this entire cosmos, this universe, there was only one type of creation, the angels. And they were there, Abiding, abiding by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing what Allah wants, completely, state of submission. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wanted to bring forth a creation that's going to worship Allah, not because they are forced to worship Allah, not because they have no other choice but to worship Allah, but because they love Allah. And they come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willingly, with their own hearts, and they submit to Him willingly. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He announces, إِنِّي جَائِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفًا on this earth, I'm going to create a Khalifa. And these angels, they said, fiha ma fiha wa dima. Ya Allah, you're going to create this creation. They're going to shed blood and they're going to cause corruption. And we are here glorifying you, exalting you, you know, declaring your holiness, your perfection. So in other words, the angels, they had a claim that Ya Allah, we are here to worship you like you. You know, what, what is the purpose of this new creation? And their worship is perfect. By no means they had any kind of shortcoming. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows something that the rest of us, we don't know. And he says, you know, Inni a'lamu ma la I know what you don't know. I know what you don't know. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I know that which you don't know. In other words, I know what I'm doing. Don't worry about it. This is a lesson for all of humanity when they look to the world with limited perception. When they look to the creation with limited perception and they wonder, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create this? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed this to happen? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed that to happen? Why did my grandfather have to die? Why did so and so have to die? Why did this person get cancer? When you have to wonder why, anytime the question why comes to you, you have to remember, Allah He knows, what you don't know. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu. I know what you don't know. And so, in that, you know, statement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you, do you not trust Allah? Do you not trust Allah? Right? And you have to place your heart and your trust and your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing that He knows what is good for you, believing that He knows what is good for the world, what is good for the creation, and everything He does is with purpose. 
And he shows them a glimpse of that purpose. He creates his human being and he teaches him names. And what's amazing about names is that names is the, is the basis of language. Right? We speak and understand each other because we use words. And words are symbols. They're pointing to something beyond. I don't have to take you to a tree to talk about a tree. I just say tree, make sound with my mouth, and you understand. You can imagine, you know, you know something that, that you've never seen before just by the use of words, by language. And this is something, you know, even modern scientists are saying this is synesthetic, you know, when you have certain, you know, feelings in your mind, where you start to smell colors, right? You mix senses. You start to hear, uh, you know, feelings. You know, so when you have senses that are mixed, they call it synesthetic. You know, similar thing happens with language. When you have language, you can make somebody feel something. You know, imagine yourself in the most comfortable place. You know, imagine yourself hearing the voice of your mother calling you. You can hear it. And then so, what happens with just words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then created this entire new reality that exists within the human self. That is pointing to something beyond. A symbolic reality, a world of meanings, a world of realizations, world of epiphanies, world of truths. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells Adam alayhi salam, you know, teach them the names. First he asks the angels, tell me the names. He said, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. Glory be to you, we don't have any knowledge except what you taught us. In other words, we have no access to anything unless you allowed us access to it. We cannot understand anything, we cannot learn anything unless you will it for us. So, Subhanak, glory be to you. Innaka anta al-alimul hakim. Now they're saying, recognizing, there is things we don't know. Yes, we worship, we glorify, but this is beyond our, our, our qualifications. This is beyond our scope. This is beyond our skill set. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses this human being, a new creation, to be the teacher of all the angels. And so the angels, they're learning from this human being. The names. And what are these names? You know, our scholars said, you know, different opinions. One of them said, these are names of everything Allah had created. In the past and the future. So, if you were to appear before Adam alayhi salam, he knew your name. And not just that, he knew where you're from and where, you know, what you did. So, so, some of the scholars are of that opinion. Others, they said, no, he knew the names of Allah. He knew the names of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him his names. And so everything that appears is from his names. And so Adam alayhi salam, he knew Allah's names, but he knew them conceptually. He knew them in, a, in an intellectual sense. He understood what these names meant. But as far as tasting and experiencing these names, he had yet to experience them. So he could tell you about Allah, but he couldn't tell you who is Allah directly. You know, the example they give, like a person who studied about honey for many, many years. He could name you all the different types of honey. He could tell you the composition of sugars and everything, but he never tasted it. He said his knowledge is one form of knowledge compared to another person who doesn't know anything about honey, but he knows what it tastes like. And what, do you, what do you know about honey? It tastes good. Alhamdulillah, you know, I enjoy it. But this person can tell you all of it. So there's two different types of knowledges. So the, the groups of the, the scholars, they said, Adam alayhi salam, he knew the names of Allah, but he knew them conceptually. He didn't know their reality. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was now going to unveil to Adam alayhi salam and humanity at large, the different realities behind the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how did he do this? First thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is Mahmud. He's the one worship. He's the one that all of the universe is bowing down to. He's the one that everything in the heavens and the earth, or shams, or shajar, yastudan, they're all making sajda to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels, Alam aqul lakum inni a'lamu ghaybu samawati wal ard. Didn't I tell you, O oh my angels, I know the hidden things of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you're hiding and what you're, you know, what you're concealing and what you're revealing. In other words, I know that you had some claim to greatness. I know that you had some claim to greatness, that your worshiping me should make you qualify to be something great, but I have something else in mind. Now, bow down to Adam. And as far as the eyes can see, a sea of angels, they all start bowing down to Adam alayhi salam. And Adam alayhi salam is now experiencing something no human being has ever imagined, no creation has ever seen before. 
He's seeing the honor and the prestige and the glory and the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appear inside him. And while the angels were bowing down, they're not bowing down to him per se. They're bowing down to the reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had placed inside Adam alayhi salam. Allah had made Adam alayhi salam, human being, the qibla for the angels. Just like you face the Kaaba and worship Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the angels turn to Adam and worship Allah. Because something inside Adam alayhi salam, they didn't know. It's from the spirit, the ruh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَنَفَخَ فِي آدَمْ مِنْ رُوحِي Allah says, we blew into Adam a ruh. The reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was present within Adam alayhi salam, animating him, making him alive, making him full of knowledge, making him full of understanding. And so through that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to show the world what does it mean to be Khalifa? Who is the Khalifa of Allah? This is a huge thing. This is a spiritual office. And so the angels were now being shown a glimpse of that. And first thing they see is the jalal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power, the majesty, the, the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're bowing down to Adam alayhi salam. They see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mu'allim, the teacher. And they see Adam alayhi salam teaching them the names. They see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored and merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Adam, enter into Jannah, you and your wife. So they're witnessing all these things. And Adam alayhi salam is witnessing the reality of the names that he already knew. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast in mercy. And he's experiencing Jannah. He's seeing honor. He's seeing prestige. He's being closed. He's being given everything. He's seeing Allah's generosity. And then all these angels, they have this high esteem for this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then something happens that shifts all of their perception and makes them realize once again, they don't know anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows all things. While the angels are bowing, Iblis doesn't bow. Iblis, he stands firm and he says, You know, Anna khayrun min khalaqtani min nar wa khalaqtahu min teen. Oh Allah, why should I bow down to him? You created him from dirt and I'm better than him. I'm created from fire and he's created from dirt. So I'm not going to bow down to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Why won't you bow down to the one I created with my own hands? I created and shaped him with my own hands. In other words, this is no ordinary creation. This human being is no ordinary creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shaped him with his own hands. You know, make of that what you will. But at least he doesn't want to bow. Because he has a claim to greatness. His claim to greatness is what? I am made from fire. He's made from dirt. And behind all of that, there's other things. He thinks he, he sees himself. And he's impressed with himself. And, and our, the Prophet ﷺ told us, not a single spot was left on the earth except that Iblis had made sajda on it. Iblis had made sajda on every single spot on the earth. And Iblis was elevated and honored and given glory. And he was leading the angels in worship. And now he's in the company of the angels who don't do anything but worship Allah. And he's now showing his true colors. And this is the thing. Our religion is a religion that's related to the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ عَطَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On that day, on the day of judgment, your wealth, your prestige, your honor, your clothing, your body, you, none of that matters. What matters? What's buried deep inside your heart? What is buried deep inside your heart? Who are you really deep inside yourself? Right? Who, you know, what do you think about Allah? What do you think about this world? What do you think about the creation? Why are you worshipping Allah? Is it to show off? Is it to claim some kind of greatness? Is it for some kind of glory? Or is it really devotion made out of love? What is it? Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes what was hidden inside Iblis. And Iblis now is exposing himself and he comes out and says, I'm better, I'm this, I'm that. And he comes with takabbur. Takabbur means to, to reach at greatness. To try to reach at greatness. And Iblis wants to show and prove that he's greater than the other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to show that he is the chosen one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you have no right to be arrogant here, O Iblis. Get down from here. And he's expelled from the divine court. So he's demoted. And that, that, that instead of humbling him, it makes him even more enraged. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes people of kufr. He says, don't you see the people of kufr, how Allah sends the shayateen to them? Ta'uzzuhum azza. They become enraged with more rage. They, they become filled with arrogance on top of their arrogance. إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ When they're told, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ, what happens? They become puffed up. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. You tell them about Allah, that's it. It's like, bro, man, why you got to always bring this stuff up, man? I don't want to talk about this. Let's, let's listen to something else, you know. Let's, let's, you know, let's do something else. They, they become filled with anger. Oh, you think you're better than me now because you're religious? You think you're better than me now because you're praying? You're right. Suddenly, do you know who I am? Do you know who you're talking to? They get into that mode. You've seen people like that. Right? Well, Allah not make us like them. Say, Ameen. 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 Right? So, Iblis, he's demoted, but he becomes even more rich and he starts to blame. And he starts to throw his, he doesn't want to take responsibility. And this is one of the qualities of the arrogant people. They don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to say, I messed up. They always look to others as, the, as the, the people that made mistakes. They are the reason I am like this. You are the reason I did this. You are the reason I became angry. You are the reason I, I got mad and I punched you. It's all your fault. It's never my fault. This is Iblis mentality, satanic mentality. And he turns around and he, he starts blaming who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Bima aghwaitani. It's your fault that I'm like this. You misguided me. You misled me. You knew I wasn't going to bow down. But you put this test in front of me anyway. Because you did this to me. Ya Allah, give me respite until the end of time. Give me respite until the end of time. So that I may come to them from front of them, from behind them, from their right, from their left. And, and you will see most of them are ungrateful to you. I will make them change your creation. Iblis is now making all these threats and promises and... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, the decision is mine and I give you respect. Do what I've, do your worst. He said, as for the people who are sincere, who, who come to me because they are sincere, mukhlasin, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll have no power over them. You have no power over them. Zoom back out, go back to Adam alayhi salam. Right? Adam alayhi salam, he's in Jannah, he's enjoying himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for him a mate. Now they're together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, you know, wala taqraba hadihi shajar. Oh Adam, don't come close. Both of you, don't come close to this one tree. Don't come close to this one tree. Or you will be of the wrongdoers. And so Adam alayhi salam is given fair warning. And he's told, Iblis is your enemy. Don't follow him. Don't listen to him. Don't take his advice. Don't listen to what he has to say. Stay away from him. He's your enemy. He doesn't want good for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs Adam alayhi salam. A lot of people, what form was he in? Where is Jannah? What form was Adam alayhi salam was in? Allahu alam. Was Jannah on earth or some other reality? Allahu alam. But Adam alayhi salam was a pure spirit, a pure ruh that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has breathed from himself. And now he's in Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show the angels something else. The angels, they saw him in this high esteem. This creation of Allah, we all bow down to him. He's our teacher, we learn from him. All these things, right? So they have this image of what it means to be Khalifa. And then Adam alayhi salam, who knows, after a million years or a billion years, shaitan starts to get to him slowly and slowly. And, 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 and the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he pulled at them like you pull out a bucket from the well. Like very slowly. Bringing them closer and closer and closer to that one tree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them not to eat from. When they finally arrived, Adam alayhi salam instinctively said, no, we don't want to do this. Right? But Iblis, he swore by Allah. He swore by Allah saying, Inni lakum la min I only want what's good for you. I only want what's good for you. Uh, he's making promises. He's saying, this tree, if you eat from it, you'll, you, you'll live forever. And you'll have you know, eternal youth and you'll have eternal kingdom. And you, you'll be in Jannah forever. You'll have to never worry about anything else. Kind of like those ads you see. You know, you want happiness? Take this pill. You know, side effects may include suicide and evil thoughts. But you know, it's, you know talk to your doctor. All these different advertisements. What are they? All promises. You want happiness? You should be driving this car instead of that car. You want happiness? You want to be, you want to be living in that neighborhood, not this neighborhood. You, want ha you have to get your green card, brother. That's when you'll be happy. Right? That's, that's what this whole thing is about. All your struggles then will have paid off. It's that promotion you're looking for. 
It's this, it's that, it's this career, it's that career. All of these promises. Iblis is telling Adam a.s. Just eat from it, you'll live forever. Right? You'll have immortality. And you'll be in Jannah under the, like the angels. You'll become like one of the angels. And Allah doesn't want you to be like that. I'm swearing by Allah, I only want what's good for you. What happens? Adam a.s. he eats from the tree. His wife, they eat from the tree. And they find out they're naked. Their clothing becomes taken off. So now they're in a state of vulnerability. And you realize that all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are vulnerable. They're all in a state of weakness. They're all in a state of desperation. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them strength. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers for them. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors them. We're all humiliated. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates us, we're all abased. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies us, we're all filthy. And so Adam alayhi salam, he becomes aware of that aspect of creation now. He says, oh my God. Right? And he's panicking. And he's taking leaves from, from, the, from the garden of Jannah. And he's covering himself. That's the fitrah. And our ulama, they said, one of the signs a person is following shaitan is their clothing becomes, you know, they start to show more and more of their skin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh, oh human beings. I gave you clothing as a beautification and as an honor, as a covering. And he says, لِبَاسُ taqwa ذَلِكَ khair." And the clothing of taqwa, that's better for you. Means cover yourself with taqwa. Don't expose yourself. Don't become naked and vulnerable in front of the other creation of Allah. Cover yourself with taqwa. Don't have anybody come to you and say to your wife or your husband, say, you know, I saw your husband at the, at the, at the club the other day. What were you doing in the club? I was just passing by, but you know, I saw your daughter doing this, I saw your son doing don't, don't be that person. Cover for others, but also cover for yourself with taqwa. Be seen where Allah wants to see you, and don't be where Allah does not need, want to see you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لِبَاسُ taqwa ذَلِكَ khair." And so what happens? Adam alayhi salam instinctively is covering himself. Now you can imagine the, the, the heartbreak of the angels all around. It is said that when Iblis was cursed, Jibreel alayhi salam, Mikail alayhi salam, they cried for, for centuries. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, what is it that's making you cry? And he knows all things and he's exalted above all things. But they said, Ya Allah, when we saw what you did with him, we are no longer feeling safe from your makr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be like that because you don't know. La ilaha illallah. Right? Don't, there are some, some people, they have this, this disease where they become overly concerned and they lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one extreme. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nobody loses hope in Allah's mercy except the disbelievers. Right? And then there's the other extreme where people have complete aman. You know, they say, you know, everything's fine. You do, drink alcohol, whatever you do. There's no such a thing as sin. It doesn't matter anyway. Like Allah is going to forgive everybody. Right? That's another extreme. We don't have aman like this. And we don't also have, you know, loss of hope. But Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels, be like, because you don't know. But Adam alayhi salam, when they saw what happened to Adam alayhi salam, now they're all shocked. This was our teacher. This is the guy that used to teach us the names of all the angels, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored. We bowed down to him. He's our qibla to know Allah, to understand Allah, to come closer to Allah. Now what happened? How did he become like this? They saw him naked. So they're shocked. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, now he's ready to be khalifa. Get down to earth. Because he said, where, where is the khalifa going to be? In Nizailun, fil ardi khalifa. So now he became khalifa on the earth. And he came down with the understanding of the concepts of morality. The concepts of right and wrong. The concepts of good and bad. And Adam alayhi salam, now experientially he knows the mercy of Allah, the justice of Allah. He knows the, the, the glory of Allah subhanahu wa He also knows the wrath of Allah. He saw, he tasted it close, first hand. And when he came down to the earth, some of the people they say he came down and he was separated from his wife for 300. No, he came down as kings, honored. That you are the inheritors of the earth. You are the inheritors of the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you here for a reason. And He mentions in the Quran that you're here for a short time. For a short time. And He says, I'm going to send to you guidance from Myself. 
And whoever follows the guidance, There is no fear upon them and there is no grief. But those who turn away and they turn their backs and they go and they, they dis discount the, the, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ اللَّهُ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us of those people. وَقُولِ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفُرُ لَا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. It's important to reflect on the story of Adam عليه السلام. You know, I know all of you have heard this story a million times, but this story is what we call the grand narrative. It contains within it wisdom. It contains within it the purpose of why we're here. What's our purpose? Why? What are we doing? Where are we going? It's all contained in this one narrative. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the story in many different places. In Surah Al-Kahf, the Prophet sallallahu told us, whoever reads Surah Al-Kahf every Friday will be saved from what? From the fitna of Dajjal. And what's amazing about Surah Al-Kahf is there is five stories mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf. Five stories. And the middle story is what? The middle story. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels to bow down to Adam and they bowed, Iblis didn't bow. He says, You're gonna take Iblis and his descendants, his children, as awliya besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's your enemy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that the entire story is revolving around the story of humanity. His story is your story, he's your father, he's your lineage. You know, you are a children of Prophet. And so, so his, his Khilafah is your Khilafah. His honor is your honor. And whatever mission he was given, you are given. Some of you are chosen above others. There's messengers and prophets, right? Who came to revive this and bring the hearts back to life. Some of you are given a lower, but still worthy cause. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen, for, chosen you for himself. He says, وَاسْتَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي I have created you for myself, for myself. And he wanted people to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with love and with free will, so much so that he allowed them to kill each other. Right? Because part of free will is what? You can do whatever you want. You don't have to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But he wants for you to be in a state of safety. He wants for you to be in a state of iman. And that's why he made things obligatory. Because he wants Jannah to be obligatory for you. So he made things that take you to Jannah obligatory. He wants to make hellfire haram for you. So he made the things that take you to hellfire haram. He wants nothing but good for you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا ظَلَمُونَ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسُهُمْ We didn't oppress them. We gave them everything they needed. Everything, he said, I gave you everything you wanted. We didn't oppress you, he said. But you're oppressing yourself. But even that, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, His forgiveness covers a lot of things. Wa'afwan kathir, He says. He overlooks and pardons a lot of things. All you have to do is turn back once. Just turn back and say, Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, on the day of judgment, there will be a line for Jahannam. You know, like when people go to prison, they don't just throw them in jail. They go through the processing, they take care of mug shots and everything. So there's this processing line happening, right? And there's one guy there, he's saying, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan. Allah tells the angels, pull him out. Pull him out. And they go, they, they find this person, he's, he's almost there. They, 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 you know, they, they bring him out, he says, you know, he called on me with Hanan, Manan, enter him into Jannah. Just one word, just one. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah becomes more pleased with a person making tawbah than a person who's lost in the desert, right? He's lost in the desert, he's facing certain death. He's about to die and he's, he doesn't know where his camel is. His camel is gone, he's ran away from him. He goes to sleep, he wakes up and he sees his camel standing over him. He's so happy, he jumps up, he says, Oh Allah, you are my abd and I'm your rab. He flips things. Right? He says that out of, out of the, the, the state of happiness that he's in. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah becomes more pleased than that person at that moment. When one servant comes back and says, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, I messed up. I, I, I'm going to try to do better. Just one. Just come back. Just come back. 
The doors of Tawbah are open. It's open. And you have a legacy of Adam alayhi salam. What does it mean to be Khalifa? It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Angels, they thought it's all about honor and prestige and worship and all these things. No. Allah showed them. There you saw him, you know, making mistake. There you saw his clothes come down. There you saw him naked. You saw him vulnerable. You saw him in a state of his humanity. Allah created them human beings. So you have to be human beings. That means what? You make mistakes, you, you make tawbah. You make sins, you make tawbah. And you repeat on your sins, you keep making tawbah. Keep coming back. Don't, never lose hope. And Rasulullah said, a person will persist in sinning. And he'll keep making tawbah. He'll keep asking for forgiveness. And then he'll go back to the same thing. And he'll ask Allah for forgiveness. And he'll go back to the same thing. And he'll ask for forgiveness. And this will keep on happening, keep on happening. Until Allah will say, Oh my servant, I have forgiven you. All of your past servants, all of your past sins, and all of your future sins. My servants can do whatever he wants. He tells the angels. Right? That doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. You don't know if Allah said that about you or not. But Allahu Akbar. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us in that state so that we turn back to Him. He made us in that state so that we keep on turning back to Him. And He's Tawwab. Tawwab means what? The one who's consistently and continuously turning back. Ghaffar. The one who's always and continuously forgiving. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for protection. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor us in dunya and akhirah. And don't let us be disgraced or humiliated on the day when it matters. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep the shayateen far away from us. The people shayateen, the jinn shayateen. We ask Allah to remove their influence from us and keep them far away from our lives. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to grant us tawfiq in all that is good, that is pleasing to us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from all things that are displeasing to Him and enter us all hand in hand into Jannah, Firdaus al -A'la, the highest levels of Jannah. And we ask Allah to grant us His love and His mercy and make us of those who die in a state of Iman, making our last words La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.